Okay, we're back. Sorry, I think I had trouble with my connection there. So I still have Dr. E. Slack with us today. So sorry, Dr. E. Slack, for that uh, interruption. But and I'm not quite sure exactly um, <laughs> where I got caught off. You said that I was tell telling you about Rachel. Yes. And um, she is our youngest and adopted. Okay. She's African American, and she's one of the graduates who will be graduating online next weekend. She's graduating with her MSW. She's a social worker and actually she's been getting time and a half pay, like kind of like combat pay wow. during this time because she still makes home visits. But um, she called me yesterday and we had a wonderful uh, Mother's Day conversation on the phone yesterday. Some of it was talking about uh, Ahmad Barbary and her post that she put on Facebook reflecting on her own journey and she and I were talking about how it is for me to be a mother of um, a little brown skinned daughter who uh, people would treat her differently. Like for example, the first time I noticed was um, whenever I had her in my arms when she was a baby, everybody was so you know happy and positive as soon as she started walking and we would be in the grocery store going up to one of the sample tables for food, um, she would go up and um, she, people would kind of like firmly, almost as in a scolding kind of way, where's your mother? Like, mm. we, we can't give this to you unless your mother's with you. And I would just say, I'm right here. I'm her mother. No. And so that's something that I never wanted her to feel like I knew why they were kind of scolding her, but only later would I say that. And I would just, you know, try to let it roll off my back. Well, in my heart, I thought this is, this is not nice, mm. but you know, we just had those conversations yesterday about what the reality is and how we can rise above it and mm. that we can make a difference. We can make the change. We can help to be culture shapers in our roles. Wow. Amen. That's uh, much needed. Very inspirational. Wow. Well, and so I mentioned family, and I know for you, uh, as I mentioned earlier, you were co-district superintendent there in the Northeast dis District with your husband. I know I was out there last year for the district conference and just had a great time and was so looking forward to the other district conferences this summer, but it looks like most of them, maybe not all of them yet, have uh, delayed at least a year, like general conference. Right, so. right. Most of them have canceled this year. Well, and I hate that, but uh, no, that's a part. So has that uh, added some extra stress to your life with that uh, happening, or has it freed some time up, or uh, really probably not yeah. much of a difference? <laughs> um, I guess yes and no, because uh, surprisingly, uh, I, I'm busier than ever. Yeah. And a poll, a poll just came out that really I think is helping a lot of us understand that we're not the only ones going to bed exhausted at night. Is that over 60% of pastors do say that they have more work to do now mm. than they did before. I am working remotely here from home in Pennsylvania, so thankfully um, I can do that. Praise the Lord for internet. Praise the Lord for Zoom. <laughs> Amen. And, um, <laughs> You know, the last pandemic a hundred years ago, they couldn't do that. <laughs> right. Wow. And that's so true. Okay. Well, thank you so much for joining us. I have just one final question for you, if you don't mind. I have somebody watching right now that's a pastor and they're thinking about going to Wesley Seminary and they're kind of sitting on the fence. Is there any advice that you could give to them uh, as they're trying to make that decision? Sure. Um, of course, just be prayerful about when because my guess is if you're watching and you're thinking about this the answer probably is yes <laughs> that you're going to want to enroll in wesley seminary um but yeah be prayerful about when because um there's no perfect time it's going to be a lot of work it'll be hard work it'll be times when you're thinking, oh my goodness, can I get through this? Yes, you can get through this and it's well worth it. And I just encourage you because it is affordable comparatively. It is accessible. It comes right to your own 
laptop where you live and work now and it's very applicable it's not going to be two different worlds that you're living in the all the work all the coursework all of the curriculum comes right into your ministry life what you're doing and where you're doing it and so it's going to support you it's going to be part of equipping you to do what you're doing even right now and it'll make you a better minister it'll make you a better leader and so i i do encourage you to pray about it to ask the lord what is his timing? When do you step into it? Do you step into it now sooner? Or do you put it into your schedule for maybe six months from now or a year? But I would say God is probably saying yes to you. <laughs> Amen. Thank you so much for those words of encouragement and wisdom. So much appreciated. And again, thank you for your time and hope that your family and yourself stay safe and healthy there. And thank you. Hope to see you very soon. Uh, Thank you, Joel. You're Great welcome. Spending some time with you. God you bless. You as well, Dr. Eastlack. Blessings.